Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to break down the players for Week 14, whose stock is rising at the exact right time as we head into the playoffs in season-long fantasy and round the final turn here in DFS. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, Week 13 was a pretty rough week because there were guys who I didn't think have good had good ceilings showed good ceilings, and I was not in on those players, so I am ready to wipe the slate clean and hopefully focus on some pretty fun players for Week 14 and beyond and get back on the winning side of things this week. I think the one that was actually most surprising to me is the first player we're going to talk about, and that's Cam Akers, only because we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting some more here for Cam Akers to finally go off. We saw a glimpse of it just a couple of weeks ago, and now... Well, it, it actually happened. He had 21 of the Rams carries, I believe, on Sunday. He finished with 15.9 FanDuel points, and it seems like he's finally taken charge of his backfield. We hope. Yeah, the key phrase you said there, Greg, was it actually happened. The other times we've gotten our hopes up on Cam Akers, it's been because of talk. This time it's because of what actually happened on the field. And what happened on the field was pretty freaking good. As you said, 21 carries for Akers out of 27 total running back carries for this Rams team. He played 63% of the snaps, which is a major spike up for him. And he also looked good. Now, part of the reason the snap rate was high was because Daryl Henderson did get banged up, but he came back in the game and they still let Akers handle the majority of the reps. So I think that was good. And Akers validated the faith by, again, playing pretty well here. They've said at times that they want him to be the lead guy, and we are seeing that now. They invested in him in the draft this year. Clearly, they believe in Cam Akers, and we're finally seeing that happen on the field. There are still a couple of lingering issues here with Cam Akers. The first one is that it's hard to know if this is sticky. They have changed running backs throughout the year. We might still see Malcolm Brown getting high leverage touches. The good thing is that Akers did get a lot of red zone work on Sunday, so that's one slightly lower concern. The bigger concern to me is that he's not a pass catching back. He has just four targets the entire season. And that can definitely limit the floor and limit the upside of a player on a half PPR site like FanDuel. So he's not a legit top tier feature back, but this Rams offense can move the ball effectively on the ground. Akers has shown that he's pretty good as well. And they're also just a good team. And I think that that's something we shouldn't overlook here. The Rams are probably going to be ahead pretty often because of how good that defense is and how well that offense can occasionally play. So I think that although there are concerns with Cam Akers still, we saw the best we've seen on Sunday, and there's reason to believe that could continue. So I think it's a good time to skeptically buy in to Cam Akers, you know, cautiously buy in, get your feet wet a little bit while not going overboard and seeing if he can make this thing stick for the rest of the way. So I think Akers is just a stock up player, right? Like it's he, his stock has risen from where it was just a couple of weeks ago, and there is still something to worry about because Sean McVay has just not been loyal to really any running back before, uh, out, outside of Todd Gurley, of course, during his heyday. But after that, it was it was very frustrating to own Todd Gurley last year. It's been very frustrating to own every Rams running back this week this year because every time you think you get into a rhythm. It, it stops, and you hope that's not the case, but with Cam Akers having that draft capital uh, attached to him, you think toward the end of this year, maybe this one is for real. Yesterday, though, Jim, did set up for a perfect opportunity for Miles Gaskin because you had Matt Breida out. You have Jordan Howard on the Eagles. You have Ahmed out. And all it was was our guy, Patrick Laird, as the third down back. But other than that, it was Miles Gaskin's opportunity yesterday. And for the most part, he took advantage. He finished with 13.1 FanDuel points. Gaskin was a revelation early on this season, went on IR, missed most of the last month. And now he's back just in time for the fantasy playoffs. And to help you in DFS, Gaskin seemingly somebody that you can rely on once again. Yeah, I think that the good thing is that he came back into his old role. So we can kind of feel good about Miles Gaskin again and feeling feeling similar to how we did before. And I think that he was underrated before the injury. So I think that although we're saying go back to where you were on Gaskin, just make sure you weren't too low on him to begin with because he played 73% of the snaps on Sunday, 21 carries and two targets. And the two targets weren't a ton, but we did see him get more work in the passing game prior to his injury. So I feel pretty good about that one. We also saw him... Look dynamic on a downfield catch on a scramble by Tua Tunga Vailoa. So I think that's all good. We could have expected this because 
the replacements struggle without him. It's not just the injuries. You know, we saw Patrick Laird and Matt Breida lose fumbles back in week 12. So it makes sense they'd put Miles Gaskin back in there. And this team needs to win. They are in the playoff hunt. They are right in the thick of it. They could win the AFC East, depending what happens on Monday night. So I think that Miles Gaskin is a good player on a good team right now and a team that should be in positive script because their defense is so good as well. Maybe not in week 13 or week 14 against the Chiefs, but, you know, overall just a good team. And I also think that although Tua Tungavailoa had some really bad plays individually on Sunday, the whole body of work, once you consider the second half, he was efficient. And that it matters a lot for a running back. They were well willing to let him open it up a little bit more. Tua played well in the second half. I think this offense is better than perception, and I also think this defense can oftentimes put them in a positive game script. That all bodes well for Miles Gaskin here. So I think that it's worthwhile to keep on grabbing Gaskin until his salary catches up to what his role is. And what his role is right now is the lead back on a good team that should have leads pretty often again outside of when they're facing the Chiefs. So arrows up on Miles Gaskin, $6,000 in Week 14 on FanDuel, and even in uh, a tough spot against the Chiefs, I think we can go to Gaskin right away here. To me, it's just the fact that Miles Gaskin is the guy, right? Like, it's so fi- it's so freaking hard to find the player that is just the man in a backfield, especially as we round the turn toward the end of this season where guys are getting rest for the playoffs. Guys, we are seeing younger players get opportunities here. Cam Akers, we just spoke about. But Tua Tagovailoa is a player that's getting a younger, a younger player getting an opportunity. But Miles Gaskin is going to be the man down the stretch for Miami, a good football team that's going to be involved in every game. There's not going to be many blowouts on either side. Putting Gaskin really in the mix uh, on a weekly basis in DFS and certainly during the season-long playoffs. One final player whose stock is rising here going into Week 14, that would be Kiki QC. And it's funny because we've done this Kiki QC dance before, Again and again and again. And he was so deep in Bill O'Brien's doghouse. He was inactive earlier this year. Well, Bill O'Brien is gone, and so is Will Fuller, which is kind of the important thing here, which means Kiki QT was going to get an op- another opportunity to step up. And a lot of us saw that opportunity and were like, all right, we're not doing this again. And then he went off in week 13, making you want to buy back in again for the fantasy playoffs and in DFS here over the next couple of weeks. Deshaun Watson was relying on him along with Brandon Cooks, making him seemingly, Jim, a very viable option down the stretch. Yeah, I was one of the people who was very skeptical of Kiki QD coming into this new role because, like you said, he was inactive, and like that's always a concern with a team when they clearly do not like a player. Like obviously Bill O'Brien not being there changes things, but like he didn't really have a great role under Romeo Cornell either. So that made me a bit skeptical here, but Cutie played well. And I think that when we get this new data, we have to change our tune very quickly and buy into Kiki Cutie in this new role here. He had nine total targets on Sunday. Four of them were at least 16 yards downfield. That is a tremendous role for a guy, given the salaries that Cutie has carried so far. And also, he came through on that volume, like you've said, and that's key because if you can earn the trust of your quarterback, that makes me a lot more willing to trust you in daily fantasy. You know, volume is volume, but if I can get efficient volume, that's even better. We've seen Deshaun Watson thrive no matter what the situation has been around him in the past. He didn't, you know, obviously have his best game on Sunday, but it was better than I think you could have expected maybe given Will Fuller was out against a really good defense. So I would still put Brandon Cooks number one on this team just because Cooks, we've seen it over a larger sample. You know, the talent is there as well. But Cutie is legitimately viable, even if you're not willing, even if you're not stacking the Texans. He can be a standalone play in DFS because the downfield work was there. And I think that's a key thing to note here. So I'm willing to adjust my thoughts on Cutie in a hurry here. We got new information. That information was glowing for Cutie. And I think it is very much stock up and just say, okay, he is now kind of in the Brandon Cooks role where he may not be the number one wide receiver on this team, but he's going to get good volume and he'll get downfield volume from a really freaking good quarterback. And that's a lot of boxes to check. So Kiki Cutie definitely erase those doubts in week number 13 and someone we should embrace down the stretch. Kiki QT is back in the mix because the data, well, says he is. What we saw with our eyes and what we did with our brains all matched yesterday here for the Houston Texans and Kiki QT. Ultimately, you hope there is consistency with QT, and I think there's going to be just with the lack of options that Deshaun Watson has at his disposal. QT is someone that he's familiar with, someone that we as a fantasy community are familiar with, and hopefully that production that we saw yesterday will be something that we are all familiar with in the upcoming weeks. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. We appreciate the time. We'll talk to you on Friday.
Looking forward to it, Greg. Hopefully week 14 goes better than week 13, and we can talk about these guys uh, once again and talk in a more positive light next Monday. Looking forward to that and bouncing back this week. Absolutely. Let's bounce back. Let's hit the ground running in week 14. For Jim Jonas, I'm Greg Sussman. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.